Hi, PerspectiveWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Tuesday, June 16th. Another very comfortable morning here in the Mid-Atlantic region as we begin a, a new day in the middle of June. Very comfortable temperatures and humidity levels that we experience all weekend long and at the beginning of the new work week on Monday. And it looks like that refreshing air mass will last until the middle of the week, but by tomorrow afternoon or evening, High pressure to the north now will shift off the east coast and that will kind of open the door to warmer and more humid air and an increasing chance of showers and thunderstorms in the area from D.C. to Philadelphia, maybe even all the way up to New York City. There's been a significant rainfall over the past few days over the Carolinas, westward out to West Virginia, and that upper level feature that has been associated with that rainfall will make a move to the north over the next 48 hours or so, but it will also weaken at the same time it pushes to the north. So exactly how much rainfall ends up, let's say, north and east of uh, D.C. into Philadelphia and even uh, New York City is still a little unclear, but the chance for showers and thunderstorms will certainly begin to uh, increase later tomorrow and tomorrow night. And uh, in earnest, that threat will increase by the time we get to Thursday, and it could be the threat continuing into the upcoming week, and it does not look like any of the next several days will be all-day rain events by any means uh, in the Mid-Atlantic region. But again, another very comfortable day today. Let's take a look at our old friend, the North Atlantic Oscillation Index. We really monitor this the teleconnection index during the winter time and into the spring, but now even into mid-June, it's kind of interesting that the forecast shown here in red is for a continuation of neutral to perhaps even negative uh, NAO right in this uh, region right here is where the forecasts generally have it sliding into a negative territory. That tells me, even in the middle of June, that there are still some colder than normal air masses roaming around North America. And indeed, if we take a look at that right now, we'll see uh, several colder than normal air masses right now across North America. And here we go. Here's a look at North America as we begin the day on Tuesday. This is the 850 millibar temperature anomaly uh, map right now. We have this cooler than normal air mass throughout the eastern, really throughout the eastern and southern U.S. right in here, across southeastern Canada, all the way up to Greenland. It's been colder than normal air. Uh, in that part of North America, and even out along the west coast, all the way in Northern California, a cold than normal air mass. This uh, air mass in the east will gradually shift to warmer and more humid uh, by the latter part of the week as high pressure, now situated to the north, shifts off the east coast, and on the back side of that high, we'll get a southwesterly flow of air developing in the eastern U.S., and that will funnel in some warmer and more humid air. By the time we get to about, let's say, the latter part of the week and Sunday, for example, high temperatures, places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, could certainly be back up to near the 90-degree mark. Well, let's get back to the near-term forecast, and this is the five-day forecast map by NOAA, the Weather Prediction Center, uh, for total precipitation amounts between now and uh, Sunday morning, the next five-day period. See a few areas of significant rainfall. First of all, continuation of that rain over the Carolinas, and you see it starts to extend to the north here with uh, at least a half an inch of precip. This is over the next five days, but this is all associated with that upper level feature that continues to sit and spin, kind of a closed off upper level low over the western Carolinas, and again, it'll start to make a move to the north over the next 48 hours, although it'll be weakening at the same time, so do not expect the same kind of rainfall uh, in D.C., Philly, uh, for example, as compared to what they've experienced over the past few days in the Carolinas because that system will weaken significant rainfall in the heartland and also out across the uh, interior northwestern part of the nation, places like Montana. That's kind of unusual for this time of the year. What is normal is to see uh, very little, if any, precipitation out across the southwestern U.S. as we go through the middle part of the month of June. 
Well, let's look in depth at the 6Z run of the operational GFS. First, we're looking at 500 millibar height anomalies, and we've talked about that upper level feature situated right here now, centered over South Carolina this morning. And again, they've had significant rainfall over the past few days over the Carolinas into the southwestern part of Virginia and West Virginia. And watch what happens over the next few days. It starts to finally push to the north, but it also weakens at the same time. Here we are now by Thursday afternoon, a little, little more than 48 hours from now. And again, it, it does push to the north, but it tends to weaken some. The push to the north will increase the chances for showers and thunderstorms, certainly in D.C., uh, perhaps as early as tomorrow and tomorrow night, uh, even into Philadelphia by Thursday or so. It will be a stretch to make it all the way up to New York City, but even there, there can be some shower activity later this week into the upcoming weekend. But again, this finally does push to the north, but it tends to weaken, and it, uh, that closed low actually becomes kind of an open area of uh, low pressure here by the uh, weekend. This is the Friday night forecast map. Notice also at this time another uh, upper level low situated over southern Canada, uh, making it into the northern plains, and we keep moving forward here. That ultimately ends up over the Great Lakes, and then early to middle part of next week starts to slide into the northeastern part of the nation. Here we are by the middle of next week. This is a week from tomorrow. Yet another refreshing air mass for this time of the year over the Great Lakes, moving into the Mid-Atlantic region and the northeast U.S. Well, speaking of refreshing uh, air mass right here. Look at all this. This is as we begin the day on Tuesday with cooler than normal air at the 850 millibar level throughout the eastern U.S. And it'll, it'll, it's been really a, a factor for several days already and it'll be slow to depart. It'll be kind of tough to push this out of the way, but once that high pressure area moves off the east coast, it will open the door for warmer and more humid air, but watch what happens tends to stick around for the next couple of days, at least at the 850 millibar level. This is now all the way uh, 48 hours from now into Thursday. Still a large area below normal temperatures throughout the southeastern part of the nation uh, into the mid-Atlantic region. We'll finally get back to normal by late in the week in places like D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, and again, maybe up back up to 90 degrees by about Sunday. But here we go. We're uh, only now getting to normal here in the uh, D.C. to New York City car. This is by Friday afternoon. And look upstream, yet another refreshing air mass for this time of the year. At this time, moving into southern Canada and the northern plains. And yes, that will ultimately uh, move along with that upper level feature we talked about a moment ago across the Great Lakes early next week and ultimately into the northeastern uh, part of the nation, the mid-Atlantic region by the time we get to the middle part of next week. So once we're done with this current refreshing air mass, it doesn't mean we're done with them completely for the month of June. Looks like another one coming by the middle of next week. Well, let's wrap up by looking at the surface forecast maps from the 6E operational run of the GFS. And again, a very persistent pattern here over the past few days with high pressure center to our north here. Now it's over uh, the interior part of New York State. A strong high for this time of the year, 1031 millibar high centered over New York State as we begin the day on Tuesday. Meanwhile, low pressure just off the Carolina coastline. Again, they've had significant rainfall, persistent rainfall with that closed off upper level low over the Carolinas over the past few days. It'll start to slide to the north over the next 36 to 48 hours or so. Here we go, go by tomorrow morning, strong low pressure. Not too strong, but uh, some heavy rainfall associated with that low pressure over southeast of Virginia uh, late tonight going into the day on uh, Wednesday. Here's that high pressure system now starting to move to the east and that kind of opens the door for this moisture. It certainly gets warmer, more humid, and an increased chance of showers and thunderstorms up through D.C., maybe even into Philly by the time we get to Thursday. Here we are now Thursday morning, and certainly an increased chance of showers. Definitely feel an increase in the humidity, because right now we have spectacular 
humidity levels in the uh, uh, mid-Atlantic region, way down in the upper 40s to lower 50s for the dew points as we begin the day on Tuesday, and that's been the case over the past several days. That will change by the time we get to Thursday and Friday and uh, into the upcoming weekend. We go a, a pretty wide area of showers, maybe an embedded thunderstorm by late Thursday with that weakening upper level feature. And it kind of sits around and continues a threat for showers into the end of the work week. That's on Friday. And then same sort of thing on Saturday afternoon. There's kind of an increased chance during the p.m. hours, and that's kind of typical for this time of the year. Not an all-day rain event on any of these days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the Mid-Atlantic region, but there uh, will be a chance of showers, maybe an embedded thunderstorm, primarily in the p.m. hours here. And we get into the latter part of the weekend. Here we are on Sunday morning, and notice upstream, beginnings of another frontal system here and again that may usher in another decent air mass for this time of the year into the northeast into the mid-atlantic region by tuesday or wednesday of next week so enjoy another couple of days of rather comfortable conditions in the mid-atlantic region in the northeast u.s and then an increasing uh, in humidity increase in temperatures later this week and an increasing shot at showers and maybe some embedded thunderstorms as well. That's it for now. For PerspectiveWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Dorian.